So this is unit two, biochemistry, looking at 2.2 water. I'm gonna be looking at the different properties of water. First one is that water exists in all three phases of matter, solid, liquid, gas, in a natural form, meaning that you can go out and find it. You can go out and find ice, you can go out and find liquid, and you can go out and find liquid vapor or steam or you know different forms of water vapor. All of those are found in nature. It's the only thing of its kind. That's like that. Water is also polar. And so what does this mean? We talked a little bit about this in the last video. Uh, this means that there's an, an unequal sharing of electrons in a covalently bonded molecule. Now that is an inordinately complicated definition. Not really. It's not that bad once you know what it is. Uh, so so the, here's the idea. <clears throat> Oxygen has eight protons in it. It also has eight electrons. Hydrogen has one of each, one proton one electron that means that there's 10 total electrons in this molecule right eight in oxygen one for each hydrogen because there's so many protons in oxygen the oxygen tends to hoard those electrons it likes it loves electrons more than anything on earth literally and so it tends to hoard them and the electrons spend most of their time up there on the oxygen end of that molecule and so what that causes that molecule to do, even though the, there's a sharing of electrons because it's covalently bonded, there's an unequal sharing because oxygen is keeping the electrons most of the time. And so the oxygen end of that molecule tends to have a negative charge, whereas the hydrogen ends of, those mo of that molecule tends to have a positive charge. This causes water to do some different things. Each water molecule can bind or can form hydrogen bonds with four other water molecules. Remember we talked about in the last video how a hydrogen bond is an interaction between two polar molecules. Well, two water molecules will have this interaction. The oxygen end of one molecule will be attracted to the hydrogen end of the other molecule. And these hydrogen bonds will form with many different other water molecules. And this causes water to behave in lots of different fun ways. One of those ways is called cohesion. Cohesion is um, because of polarity, water is really attracted to itself right and so you see this anytime there's something else that water is not so attracted to and that it will kind of form these beads and you see this on the spider web here how the water is coiling up on itself rather than like resisting gravity and it's kind of key, it's kind of staying this bead on these spider webs which spiders have figured out and this is how they this is how they drink um, <clears throat> but this cohesion causes water to act in certain ways right it, it wants to stick to itself well water also likes to stick to other things particularly other polar things and so glass is a great example of this and so if you create a water vapor say like a hot shower or something like that then water will stick to that glass because water likes glass this is called adhesion kind of like adhesive tape right well, these two things combined, cap, or these two things combined, cohesion and adhesion, cause an interesting phenomena called capillary action. I don't know why I've got actions plural there, but that's okay. Uh, capillary action is water's ability to climb up these tiny tubes, and that's what the little cartoon is showing you there. It's kind of like you know when you go to the doctor, they they draw blood, they poke that little tube onto that little blood drop on your finger and that what that blood just goes up into the tube why well the blood is mostly water it likes the glass because of adhesion and so it starts to climb the glass and as it's climbing up the side of the glass it's bringing itself up along with it because of cohesion this is used in nature in order to get water to the tops of trees there's these tiny little tubes in trees called xylem and you can see it on that picture there and water will climb all the way up to the top of trees making sure they live long happy lives next water has a high heat capacity because each water molecule is bound bound to four other water molecules it takes a lot of energy so let's say you wanted to pull that middle water molecule out you'd have to break four hydrogen bonds to do that so water is able to can absorb a whole lot of energy it's why it has such a high boiling point and so the sun shines on the ocean all day <clears throat> big this big idea and then as the earth kind of flips over to the dark side, 
that side of the earth doesn't freeze because of all that heat that was absorbed by the oceans released back out into the atmosphere and causing things to kind of stay nice and warm which is good well if we wanted to get energy rid of energy out of our bodies out of like heat out of our bodies what's the first thing we'd get rid of water that's why we sweat sweat has this other kind of effect called evaporative cooling where the breeze or the air kind of blows over our skin it causes us to be cooled as well uh, unless you live where we live and it's the humidity is so high that uh, water doesn't want to go into the atmosphere so that's why it doesn't really work here now let's talk about how when water freezes uh, it causes some interesting interactions so when water is in liquid form the molecules are kind of moving around pretty fast and they can't really, you know, they're, they're interacting with one another. Uh, so much, you know, they're interacting enough to where they want to stay together, but not so much where they want to stay still. Well, as water cools down, it slows down. And those molecules kind of get into like where they're locked in place. And you see that on the right side of that cup there, where they form this very, uh, very specific kind of structure to where they're actually spreading out. And so when they spread out, it's creating a it's creating a situation where you have the same amount of mass, but you have more volume. And so if you if you have the same amount of mass with more volume, you decrease density. And so as water freezes, it actually becomes less dense than liquid. So frozen water is less dense than liquid water, and that ice will float, which is good if you're a fish or something that lives in the water in the winter time and the water starts to freeze. If the water froze and sunk, the entire lake or whatever would freeze solid, killing everything in there. But instead, water floats, forms a, a layer, of layer of ice on the surface, and lots of animals are able to live because of that. So it's a pretty neat thing. Water is also the universal solvent. What does this mean? Because of its polarity, it is able to pull things apart that also have a charge. We talked about sodium chloride being an ionic bond. Whereas sodium is positive and chlorine is negative, well, water also has a positive and negative. And so if you put salt in water, what does the salt do? It dissolves. It breaks apart. All of those little pieces just kind of separate. And so when we say universal solvent, water is able to dissolve lots of things because of its polarity, which is pretty cool. Which brings us to the next little bit. It's about mixtures. A mixture is just the combination of any two or more substances. Pretty plain. This is a mixture of like M and M's and raisins and other and nuts and I think that's about it. And uh, see, so see, it's just really simple. There's all different kinds of mixtures. The ones that we're most familiar with are solution. A solution has two parts: a solvent. The solvent is the dissolver, like we just talked about. Water being the universal solvent. It's like the liquid portion of this, usually. Sometimes they're both liquids, but this is the dissolving liquid. And then the solute is the um, thing that's being dissolved, like salt in salt water is the solute. Um, I don't know what that blob is there, but they put that blob in the red stuff, and it makes a solution. The key word for solution is that all the particles are evenly distributed, and that the, the solution is homogeneous meaning everything is evenly mixed and distributed, completely dissolved, and you couldn't separate them. You couldn't look at it and tell the difference between the solute and the solvent. With a suspension, this is where you have a mixture still, um, but this is uh, where all the particles are kind of suspended. They're not dissolved, and they're not even, they're not even equally distributed, so you wouldn't call it homogeneous necessarily. And the suspension of the particles are usually bigger, like you can actually see them floating around. Like salt water is a great example of this. You know, like the top, especially the top of the salt water, where you can see all the little floaties, like all the little things in there, the planktons and all that business. So that would be an example of a suspension. Italian dressing is an example of a suspension. Blood, as far as biology is concerned, is an example of a suspension as well. Blood has, blood has plasma, which is the liquid, and then all the bits that are in it, like blood cells and platelets and all that, that stuff make up uh, blood and so another example of something that's similar to a suspension but is not quite a suspension well it is it's a little bit more I don't know how to say it it's a colloid colloid is a more permanent suspension why is it more permanent well the particles tend to be smaller they tend to be more homogeneous than a suspension but not a solution you can still see particulate in there 
they would eventually settle out right you, the, they use the salt water there it is right there you can see as you're getting deeper down that the salt water is more of a colloid or colloid however you pronounce it and then milk is an example of a colloid as well um if you use milk you know if you leave milk on a like a chest or drawer or something in your room for like six months it will eventually like form cheese on the bottom and that's gross you need to like clean up after yourself but the reason that cheese is forming on the bottom because all of that fat will eventually settle down to the bottom and kind of settle in and form like a solid because that's what it is it's like a solid and so uh but it's it's more permanent it lasts longer than say italian dressing which settles out in just a few minutes and so the another key thing that i didn't say with mixtures is mixtures are just physically mixed together they're not chemically mixed together uh, that would be something else completely but a mixture is just a physical mixture